What is up my ninjas? I am Strident and I'm back with another video. This time it's a little bit of a vlog. Um, I wanted to talk about what makes a good figure. Because a lot of collectors are confused. You know, as I move around the internet and as I get older and have been collecting action figures for most of my life, the things that I hear collectors say count for value when you pick up an action figure, when you start collecting a line, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's staggering, you know, from, you know, they don't need it or articulation because I'm gonna leave them in the package anyway, to, you know, it costs too much money for the company to actually give us more articulation and accessories to, you know, smaller runs cost more money so they cut corners everywhere all that shit it's it's all excuses i mean that there's there's some truth in some of those statements i mean smaller runs cost more money but when you're talking about billion dollar companies that have been putting out a level of quality for you know 30 plus years then i don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> i i don't even want to to, to, to have those kind of uh, conversations with people because, you know, you pay for a product. So as someone who primarily collects action figures from all over the place, I want to talk about the things that matter, the things that can make a figure worth the price point. And as you know, I, I collect a lot of imports and sometimes like with the Ryuki uh, common riders. I've bought some of them twice. Once by Figma, once by Figuarts. And both times I spent, you know, about 30 to 40, 40 bucks a piece. With the Figuarts, it can be from 40 to 60 a piece, and in some cases, a little bit more. Um, but, you know, when you've collected a Figuarts, collected Figuarts for as long as I have, there's a level of quality that you get used to, and the price usually seems worth it. And I admit, there's times where it's a Tomashi Web exclusive, doesn't come with extra hands, or it comes with only two extra hands, and the one weapon, and that's it. No stand, nothing. And it's, it's going for 70 bucks right off the bat. That kind of shit pisses me off, and I don't go for those exclusives. Um, but Let's start at the top. First off, sculpt, likeness. How much does the character come across? The character is supposed to be represented. How much does that character show up, you know, in, in the actual figure? Does your figure sculpt accurately represent the, the character from whatever media or medium you saw him? Uh, a lot of times people make this make uh, I'm sorry excuses for why a figure's likeness can be off um, they, they say stuff like it doesn't work but I like it if you're gonna pay money for it it needs to be on point you know especially when we're talking comics to from from 2d to 3d um, we're talking film it better look like the film the design documents used to make the characters look as good as they do on film, those are available. And they're definitely available to whoever has the license, the master license for that particular property. So there's no excuse. Um, you know, you've heard me bitch about this. I primarily collect uh, movie figures from Hasbro when it comes to the Marvel Universe. I love the designs of the cinematic universe, but a lot of times, Hasbro just doesn't feel like doing the extra work and giving us accurate representations of these characters in 3D form. Uh, Figure Arts or Bandai, on the other hand, they always do. Above and beyond. Figma even does. Above and beyond. So, you know, NECA, they definitely do. Um, so, you know, that's something I'm big on, and I think that that's something that needs to be present on your figure. 
Sorry, especially when they're uh, asking for you know 20 bucks and up. It better look exactly like the character from the medium that you know this toy was representing, you know. Uh, or in plain English, the version of the character that's being represented. However they showed up in whatever medium you saw them in, they need to look like that in toy form. Uh, the next thing, articulation. This is a given, right? I hate action features, so you can keep the action features. I don't need them. If it's lights, I don't really care. If it sounds, I don't really care. I definitely don't care when it's you press a button and they do the punching action. Fuck that shit. I don't need that stuff. I want to pose my figure the way I want to pose it. Um, figure Arts is the pinnacle when it comes to this with Figma right behind them. Uh, Marvel Legends usually don't give you the, the level of quality that you should be getting for these. DC UC, same thing. They always lack, you know, Mattel is hit and miss with their articulation. Their uh, WWE Elite figures, amazing articulation in most cases, but then you look at the DC UCs and, and the multiverse figures, and the articulation is still kind of bubkiss. Everything looks outdated for the superheroes, but then you move over to WWE and it looks amazing. And I, I'm pretty sure it's a budget thing. The WWE is pouring more money into the merch than DC Comics is, which is kind of sad, but, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it kind of sucks that, you know, that's, that's the way that things work. But, um... You know, there are choice figures, like most of the Captain America figures can put the shield in front of them and you can put them in a running pose. I've shown you that in my reviews. You can hold the shield up above his head. Um, your Spider-Man figures. There are quite a few Spider-Man figures that are really poseable. And I'm talking Toy Biz and uh, Hasbro. Less on the Hasbro side, way more on the uh, Toy Biz side. Um, Mafex. Mafex is my number three company when it comes to uh, action figures these days. I hated the Dark Knight figure and then they did a 2.0. The 2.0 fixed all the issues I had with the first one. And uh, I have the uh, Mafex Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure. And it blows the Hasbro one out the water. The articulation is just perfect. I have no issues with it. So articulation is a big deal. You've gotta be able to recreate signature poses and scenes and such from the movie, TV show, comic, whatever, video game, you gotta be able to do that stuff and articulation is necessary. Number three, accessories. Most characters have some sort of accessory, be it uh, they take off their helmet or mask or, you know, there's gestures that they do with their hands uh, or there's weapons, which is the most common. A lot of companies don't give you as much weaponry as you should get with your character. They don't give you extra hands. They don't give you extra heads. You know, these are things that uh, NECA does really well with. Um, SH Figuarts, Bandai, they do so well with. Um, Mafex, like they're made by Medicom, they do really well with it. Figma does really well with it. Um, Hasbro and Toy Biz, not so much. Hasbro has had some examples though where they do it with uh, characters like Iron Fist and uh, Machine Man, where they give them extra hands that fit a gimmick that is something that's a signature to the character. And that's necessary. That adds value to the figure. If it can do all these things, then you can, you know, confidently say, you know, that's why this figure costs $20. If not, then it should be cheaper, you know? When I look at the multiverse uh, Batman v Superman figures and you see that they really don't come with anything, how can I pay 20 bucks for that? It doesn't make any sense. But that's what Mattel was asking. Meanwhile, you can pay 20 bucks or 24 bucks for the uh, elites by Mattel also, and they put the DC UCs in the, you know, uh, the multiverse figures to shame because they come with a whole bunch of stuff. The articulation is better and the paint is better. So, you know, uh, accessories are super important. I mean, what good would be getting a Master Chief if, if, if he didn't even come with a gun, you know, or he came with one gun and none of the special weapons that you uh, 
you know, I shouldn't say special, but the other weapons, nothing else, you know, not even a pistol or a magnum as they're called in the game. Um, that wouldn't make any sense. You know, what good would be getting a Power Ranger and he doesn't even come with his, his signature weapon, you know? Even Imaginex, done by uh, Fisher Price, they even get this and they even give you uh, accessories with a lot of the characters. Sometimes it's a helmet, armor, a sword, and some other thing, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's, it's, it's good, it's awesome, you know, that lets the little people <laughs> Uh, the, you know, the young folks, the kids, the baby, they get to feel like daddy and mommy, the adult collectors, you know what I mean, when they get that kind of stuff, because accessories, they build value. Um, when you go to Marauders, you pretty much, the bulk of your price is built on accessories. So if you can, you know, pick the right accessories to go with that figure, you customized it that much more, and it makes the purchase that much more worth it. So uh, accessories, I mean, I mean, and, and not to mention, they set off your figure. Why would you not want to set off the figure, make it look good, you know, make it look complete? So accessories are super important. Um, a lot of you newer collectors don't listen to the folks that tell you all this kind of BS because they overcomplicate the concept of collecting. It's simple. Do you like the character? Yes. Do you want a 3D version of the character? Yes. Does he come with all the shit that the character uses? If he does, then that's quality or she, then that's quality. If it doesn't, then it's not quality. You know how many Batman figures don't come with batarangs and they should? They don't come with grapple guns and they should? That's, it's 2016, by now that should be like commonplace that Batman comes with a bunch, like three Batarangs and a grapple gun and maybe a couple smoke bombs or something and hands to hold all that shit. You know how many Batman figures that did come with, uh, you know, accessories that can't hold those accessories? There's a, a lot of them. And that was commonplace by Mattel for a while. And it shouldn't ever be commonplace. He's a character who definitely could benefit from alternate heads, alternate hands, and a slew of weapons. Because Batman is a gadget person, you know? Um, uh, next up, compatibility and uh, consistency within the line. So I sing the praises often of Soda Street Fighter. I mean, there are characters in the line figures that aren't like perfect but as a whole that is a good blueprint for what your line should look like when we talk about cohesion and uh, consistency all across the line there were points of articulation that are present on every figure and then there are things that vary like double jointed elbows um, and that's the main one. Every other point of articulation was there on every figure. Every figure had double jointed knees. Um, every other figure, every figure had, you know, some re replaceable hands. Every figure had, uh, I don't know, some accessory that was part of their character, you know? Um, and scale wise, they were all in proportion to each other, except for maybe one or two figures. I like that. For me, that's important. And I mean, why not? Why would you make a line where everybody's the same size? It doesn't make much sense. So when you have a line where everybody, I mean, in the comics, all the superheroes are different sizes, different heights. Why would your figures not reflect this, you know? That's one of the, the things I did not like about the DC UCs is that a lot of characters had the same exact body type, they were the same height, same width, everything, and it's because they kept using the same bodies all across the board. Well, not all across, but across the board, they used a lot of the same bodies over and over and over and over. And granted, by themselves, they looked good. When they stood next to one another, it's like, uh, this doesn't make sense. This is why I would supplement by using uh, DC Collectibles figures. At the time, I guess some of them were DC Direct. But uh, there should be, you know, this consistency with scale and, you know, 
features all across the line. It doesn't make sense to have a roadblock that's the same size and height as Scarlet. That's not how it works. You know what I mean? She's smaller than Roadblock. Roadblock's supposed to be a big dude. Um, not to say that we really have that, but I know in past lines, we did have that, where all the Joes were relatively the same size. Um, if you are collecting a line and they choose not to... I mean, if it's part of the aesthetic of the line, like reaction figures, and even those have scaled variety, you know? In, to some degree, but if you're collecting a line and they don't even give a fuck about the characters enough to give you individual scale, it's probably not that great of a line, you know? And there are exceptions, don't get me wrong, but that's not quality. Um, a lot of people talk about secondary price or secondary market pricing. And they talk about, you know, the value of a figure. And it's like, you know, all these things, these four things that I've already, I spent this 16 minutes talking about. They should come into play, not just when the figure came out and is the figure available right now, which we all know is a fallacy because there are figures that are in stores right now, like the Civil War figures that go for ignorant prices online simply because certain fans will pay that money. You know what I'm saying? So... The, the quality of the figure needs to, you know, to me, it needs to be up to snuff in order for me to be able to say, you know, this is a justified purchase. You know, this makes sense. I'm getting my money's worth. I mean, think about it if you were making a major purchase. Say you're buying a car. If it doesn't have four wheels, it doesn't have suspension, it doesn't have a brake system, fuel injection system, all these things, you wouldn't buy it. No matter how pretty the outside looked, you wouldn't buy it. And if they asked for like $100,000 and all these things were missing, you fucking triply so wouldn't buy it. So why would you do that for your hobby, which is supposed to be fun and stress-free and, you know, you're supposed to get enjoyment from this? You really... You wouldn't, you know, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that now, you know. Um, number five is fun factor. I spend a lot of time when I do these reviews talking about the technical aspects of these figures that we love so much. And, you know, in recent years, when I made the switch to just the figures that I love, there's so much, I have so much fun with those figures that it makes each of my reviews feel worth it. Before, I would review, I would get caught up somewhat in the hype and try to review what's hot right now, not what I love, you know? That's why I had, when I looked at my, my Marvel Legends, which I'm getting ready to sell, the majority of them, I had like nine or 10 Spider-Man figures and, you know, two or three of them were shitty. In my opinion, they were shitty figures. Why did I need that many? Or, uh... I bought most of the, the Captain Americas that were released by Hasbro. Why? They weren't that great. Um, I couldn't have the kind of fun with them that I had with the Toy Biz ones. For some reason, even with the fact they had you know, jointed figures or articulated figure, fingers, and uh, you know, Cap had that huge neck, that kind of stuff, didn't stop me from enjoying putting Cap's shield on his back with the straps and then taking it off and clipping it to his hand and actually having him block things and fight guys and all that stuff and jump up and do split kicks and cross the stream and blah, blah, blah. Like, I had so much fun with those. My sons and I played, actually it was more so the older son and I, we would play these crazy plots and it was fun, you know? We were able to have fun. New Marvel Legends, for some reason, and I know I'm harping on Marvel Legends. Don't hate me because I'm saying this. It's just that I want them to be good, and then I get them, and I open them up, and then stupid, basic things just aren't there. I want to have fun with my Marvel Legends, but then there's issues like, you know, their legs don't go very far forward enough for them to sit down. Or they can't do a split to kick someone. And this is characters like Wolverine, characters like... 
Spider-Man, like Captain America, people that kick shit. And you, I can't kick, I can't make them kick stuff. Why? You know what I mean? Why would that be problematic? That kind of shit, it doesn't make sense to me. And I never understood why that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't be like that. It should be one of those things that stays a given all across the board so that you can easily play with them. Halo figures from McFarlane. Actually, a lot of things that McFarlane was making up until the uh, Walking Dead figures, the, 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 la- the latest couple waves, you, you would pick them up because they'd look amazing. And you try to make them kick. You try. I mean, I was a big fan of Red versus Blue, and you'll see a lot of that in my Joe um, shorts. That there's a lot of things that uh, I, I either took or was inspired by Red versus Blue. And uh, actually, I guess I should say I'm a fan of Monty Ohm. Um, you know, rest in peace. Um, But I would pick up my Halo figures and try to recreate some of the insane choreography that he came up with. And I couldn't do anything with them in some cases. The arms seemed fine, but the legs always were limited. So when I had to make them kick, it just wouldn't work. And, you know, stuff like that cuts down on fun. You know, how much fun do you have with these characters? And I'm not talking about fun in terms of the hunt or fun in terms of, I look over and I see that I have this figure that I hunted for so hard and it's sitting there. No, I mean fun in terms of you actually enjoy, you have interacted with this figure and you enjoy you playing with the figure, using it in action, you know, doing something with it. You understand the limitations, you understand the uh, things that it's, it's, it's super proficient in doing, you know, you understand all that shit. The thing I see, though, is a lot of people who don't, you know, people who barely pose their figures or, you know, they got them in stiff poses, don't move the legs, all kinds of things. And I'm like, why do you collect action figures if you don't even have the imagination to do anything with them? What's the point? You know, I've watched several uh, videos from people like Anthony's Customs. And at the end, they have these like montages of. Like, this is the figure in action. But a lot of times, the figure's just standing there. They're not posed really doing anything. They're just standing there, you know? The legs aren't doing anything. They might be holding their gun, but that's it. And it's from multiple angles. And you're trying to tell me that this is a figure that's worth buying, but it doesn't look like you had any fun posing the thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's not right. That doesn't make sense. So, fun factor is probably the most important thing. And... On the flip side of all my criticisms, when I talk about fun factor, you have to enjoy what you buy. Don't buy it because of the hype. Don't buy it because you're trying to be be part of a group like the sheeple. Um, Buy it because you love it and it's fun for you, you know? These days, there's a lot of sheeple, man. There's a lot of people not thinking for themselves and it's weird because this is something that's fun this is our hobby and there's so many people who are going along with what other people say is quality and that's not at all how it should be the way it should be is that first and foremost you collect what works for you you collect what is fun for you it's not about anybody else you know um you can be part of a fan community and you know not dick ride every statement that's made it seems really strange because you know most people don't do that but you can disagree with people you know people you're subscribed to me you don't have to agree with me on everything and you probably won't you know some i'm i am a minority amongst minorities when it comes to a lot of things and that's fine i don't have an issue with that but you know you should do this because you enjoy doing it. Don't do it because your buddy does it. Don't do it because, you know, 5,000 people in a in a Facebook group do it and you want to have pictures to show. Don't do it because, you know, I don't know, whatever the stupid reason could be for you to put down thousands upon thousands of dollars a year, 
in in toys. You know, if you're not going to enjoy it, then this is probably not a good hobby for you. You got to enjoy it. You got to experience this shit for yourself. And this is something that is not very well uh, encouraged in in a lot of other videos and reviews. I mean, there's a few people I've heard say, don't worry about what I think, because folks will ask them before they make the purchase. They say, don't worry about what I think. You come up with what works for you. You know, buy it based on what you feel. But, you know, when a reviewer is ob as objective as I am, the rest is left up to you as far as quality goes. But if you really feel like this is something that you enjoy, then you should stick with it. You know what I mean? Like, it should be your thing. Um... And by your thing, obviously, I'm saying you should like it enough to be able to have fun with what you collect. And I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself in some ways, but this is stuff that shouldn't even have to be said. That often has to be said because folks don't get it. They do a lot of things based on what their peers are doing or group mates or whatever are doing. And it's like, we're all too old to be following the leader and shit you know what i mean like we're too old to be jumping on the bandwagon you know i got my two kids i got two jobs sometimes three um i don't want to you know and i have a wife i don't want to i don't need to follow someone else's model i'm doing my own thing i need to do what works for me in my situation you know what i mean and i have immense amounts of fun with the things i collect you know, my, my, my Kamen Riders, my Super Sentai figures, my Masters of the Universe, my Ultraman uh, or Ultra Act figures, my DCUC collection. Because if you remember, a lot of the reviews, I would have negatives about stuff. And then I would uh, still have the figure in my uh, collection because overall, I was passionate about those characters, you know, and, and I... In some many cases, there were characters from books that I grew up reading, and I followed them all the way till now, so it made it more satisfying for me once I got the figure, just that I had a representation of some of these characters. Also, I was smart enough to say if the DC UC sucks, then the, the DC Direct, DC uh, Collectibles version may not, you know, it may not suck. So uh, I would cherry pick. And that's something I do till this day. I cherry pick the figures I buy just to make sure that I can get the most out of what I buy. So the, the bottom line is enjoy what you collect. Enjoy it, play with it, learn what it does, learn what it can't do. Um, enjoy it because otherwise what's the point? And don't let everyone else sway you. Sorry, I, I keep stopping to take a drink. Um, just drinking water, actually. Um, it's just one of those strange things that I don't even understand why there's a need for me to say these things, but I feel like it needs to be said. And I tend to be in that position often where I'm the person saying the thing that needs to be said because no one else will say it. I honestly feel like Toys should be fun, first and foremost. If you're not having fun with these toys, what's the point in putting down so much money on them? You know? Per year. It's like cigarettes. Except cigarettes don't always cost 20 bucks a pop. You know what I mean? When you look at the yearly amount that many people spend on their $5 cigarettes or their $8 pack of cigarettes or it adds up, you know, because you do this every week, every couple weeks. Some people do it every couple days, depending on how much they smoke. Now look at us collectors. Toys R Us has a deal today. We're in Toys R Us today, or, or Target, or whatever, or whatever online retailer you use. The next day, something goes on clearance, you pick it up. The next day, you know, it's the release date for some figure that you pre-ordered, and you already got money on that. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. It, it adds up over time. Which brings me to the final piece. When you do get to 
chat and talk about your figures. Uh, this is and this is just me throwing in some extra information. And you do get to chat and talk about your figures. If you ever find yourself on a quote unquote fan page or a uh, forum like like a Hasbro forum for GI Joe or a uh, Mattel forum for DC figures or DC comics uh, what are they DC collectibles forums speak up say what's wrong you know they're not concerned with what they got right because they already got it right they're concerned with what they can fix to make the product better if we don't tell them they don't know there's a problem a lot of people I see this in the Joe communities they think that there's something wrong with you pointing out that something is not up to snuff with a line that you may have spent thousands you know some people spend millions or a year millions maybe in the over the course of the from when they started collecting to now and they feel like they don't have a right to say that you know do cams are not okay the 25th do cams are just not fucking okay or double jointed knees and only one of the two joints works that's fine or gummy double jointed knees or why is it that Joes don't have double jointed elbows by now? It's shit like that. You can say it. You put in the work finding the figures. Many of us do still go to your brick and mortar shops. And uh, a lot of us hunt in real life and online. We have a right to say what we think we should be getting. Especially when the price went up from 290 something in the 90s to fucking 20 or 30 dollars or more on the secondary market. Fuck that shit. If you're gonna raise the price, you need to hear what I feel. You know, what, what your product is failing to do. You know, because there's a lot that, you know, this more expensive product fails to do to warrant the price hike. And the fact that some fans are just too cowardly or too passive aggressive to say anything, it's pretty stupid. That's your problem. It's not our problem that you can't speak your mind. And finding all the excuses in the world when people say something, that doesn't help either. Companies need to know when they do something right and when they do something wrong. We can praise them. We do reviews. We praise them. When they do something right, we tell you, buy this figure, we recommend it, it's quality, etc., etc. But if the figure sucks and fails to do what it's set out to do, we have to be thorough and say, it doesn't do this, that, and the third, and if they did this, this, and this, we would have a better figure, you know? Give examples, all that stuff. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with giving actual constructive criticism. Not nitpicking, because a lot of people, a lot of reviewers, nitpick the fuck out of figures just because. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually looking at the figure, assessing what it should be able to do, and then assessing what it can actually do. So what does it do right, and what is it supposed to do? What does it do wrong, and what is it supposed to do? You should be able to just get those points out so they can be like, oh, okay, we need to increase increase the range of motion in the shoulders. So we need to scoop out closer to the pectoral muscles, you know? Shrink the pe pectorals, widen the range of motion, you know, arm over chest. Fix the, smooth out the tops of the hips so that figures can actually sit down. These are all valid criticisms that, you know, gonna do this if this is your hobby and you put all that time and money into it you damn fucking sure should be able to say what you feel about whatever the figure line is and lastly the price the price should be in proportion to what you get in the package um i guess this should have been something in the beginning but um it's super important that you get the right value for what you are paying these days, everybody's doing a $20 figure, and you know, you're not getting $20 worth of figure. You know, you think about, um, you know, your NECA, your average NECA figure. 
you think about what you get in the package with the neck of you know, all the different heads, um, the different hands, you get a whole bunch of accessories. I can use the Terminator figures, for example. The last three Ultimate Terminators are $20. And you get extra hands, multiple heads, um, da battle damage parts, all kinds of shit. And you're only paying 20 bucks. Not to mention that the sculpts are out of the out of this world. Fucking articulation is off the chain. You know, it's it's off the chain in a very basic, uh, like what you just what you need kind of way. And uh, twenty bucks. That makes sense. Um, these new Power Ranger figures, they're huge. They're about the same size. They have a lot of articulation. But like Jason, it's just the figure, the holster and the gun in dagger mode. That's it. No extra hands, no nothing. Why is he 20 bucks? Then Tommy comes with extra hands, the flute, the um, or the dragon dagger, I'm sorry, and the sword of darkness, and the holster to put it in, and he's $20 also. I mean, in a way, it's kind of cool that you get all that for the same price, but it goes back to the consistency thing. Shouldn't they all come with everything that you saw them use? So Jason should have perhaps the power sword. Instead, that's a, a freaking uh, exclusive. It's a, it was a SDCC exclusive this year, along with the clear, you know, he was kind of transparent version of, of, of the Red Ranger. Why? You know, I think he came with that sword and he came with uh, uh, Dai Jujin's uh, sword or the Megazord saber. Why didn't he come with, why didn't the regular release come with those things? You know what I'm saying? These are all things when I say, you know, value, you know, the price should be in proportion. This is what I'm talking about, you know? Um, and this isn't to mention, not to say that there aren't some figures that just fall into that price point because of quality and don't necessarily have the amount of stuff. Like NECA has done so many different types of figures and like, Almost everything they do comes out at a $20 price point, you know, or close. Like Ripley, she usually doesn't come with that much, but she still comes in at $20. But when you look at the figure, you see all the paint variation, you see all the detail, you see all the sculpt work, and it feels as though you're getting what you paid for. You know what I mean? And for 20 bucks, that's crazy. That's super crazy, because when you go over to like Figure Arts or Mayfex, you pay 40 on average, then you move over to your Masters of the Universe Classics, and uh, you're paying about 35 on average. You know, that's the super low end, and then you know the details go nuts, paint goes nuts, accessories. Sometimes you only have one or two, but most of the time you have exactly the accessories that the figure comes with, and the articulation is pretty stellar. It's standard stuff for them. Um, it's like they've already proven a certain level of quality. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and that's the way it should be. But a lot of, you know, you're, you pay 20 bucks for your legend, but most of them, you'll be lucky if you get an accessory. Besides the fucking, you know, build a figure, a collecting kind of figure. And most times, they're using the same body over and over and over, so they've cut costs on their end. How come you don't benefit from that? So this is what I mean when I say the price should be in proportion to what's in the package. There are a lot of Joes from, um, what you call it? a lot of Joes from Pursuit of Cobra Line that came with so much stuff that it almost warranted the fact that now when you go back and you buy them, like take the, uh, the Shock Trooper or Beachhead, you know, from Pursuit of Cobra, they come with so much shit that it's almost justified that those figures are almost $20 now, you know? Paying 15 bucks for a Joe that comes with all that, all that sculpted detail, the articulation that allows them to actually hold their weapons the right way. Freaking the, the pieces of the helmet alone that you have to put together with the gas mask and the goggles, it, it justifies the price. So, you know, you should be looking at that when you go back and you buy these you know, your figures. You shouldn't just be buying it based on the name alone. Some of the Dragon Ball Z figures that you are to put out, they know it. They're making money off the fact that there's a connection, a nostalgic connection. 
and they're charging you so much. Buy them at fucking Barnes and Noble for 40 bucks. Don't buy them online for 60 and 80 bucks and 100 bucks. Just go to Barnes and Noble. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you love them, buy them for less somewhere else. Don't waste the money spending all of it buying it online for these inflated prices, you know? And don't believe the hype. There's a lot of people who don't understand and just go with the flow because eBay is a certain way. And that's not always the way it works. You can haggle with people when you go to cons um, or when you go to toy shows, um, or if you go to places that, that, that sell, you know, secondhand figures like Big Fun and stuff. You know, they sell collections, they sell older stuff right there and you could haggle with them. Do it, you know? But you should be aware that your price, the price that you settle on should be in proportion to what you get. If the figure's incomplete, there's no way they can ask for more than retail. You know what I'm saying? Or it just doesn't make sense. It's not complete. Unless it's something super rare that you just could never find that was short packaged in 1980 something or 70 something. You know what I'm saying? Like then there's kind of like a give and take. But a lot of times you hear people, I mean, you guys saw my, my video about uh, secondary market prices and how crazy that shit is. There's freaking figures, those wrestling uh, creative superstar figures. The Sting set, I got it just the other day for like 10 bucks at Target. It was on clearance. But in the months before, I saw it online for 50 bucks. Because at the time, I guess it was it was rare in most places, or somebody thought it was. So on Amazon, that was the price. On eBay, that was the price. And I'm talking, I bought mine, obviously it was new and packaged, you know, because I bought it in the store, the package wasn't damaged. I literally bought two of them, two packages, for the price of what, actually for less than half of what it goes for online. One of them. You know, I bought the, uh, Sting set, and I bought the uh, Dean Ambrose set with the Executioner costume, and uh, both of them were like 10 bucks. I'm telling you, it proportion, and, and I think that's a good price for those guys. I mean, typically, they're like 12 or 13 dollars, you know, sometimes 14 if you buy them at Toys R Us, and you're getting so much in the box, I can't complain. You know, I've, been, I've bought almost all of the bat the battle, the um, creative superstar figures since they've come out because you get so much, you know? And I use them to supplement my fantasy area, my swords and sandals area, because I have a lot of knights and, you know, centurions and all that shit. And it works perfectly, you know? So that's an important part because a lot of times, and I know a lot of you get this already, so I'm preaching to the choir, but a lot of times it's like we get carried away with the want, and then you forget about the means to get that thing, the means to achieve the want. And it's like, you know, you don't need to be eating ramen just because you collect action figures, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's it. <laughs> These are my my things that a great action figure, that make a great action figure. All these things go into it, you know, it's the whole process of collecting figures, you know, you gotta know all this stuff. I felt the need to say it, like I said at the top of the video, uh, a lot of people seem confused and they've just been saying a lot of things that just don't make sense. They don't, they don't fit the bill the way they should. They don't sound logical. And you know me, my goal doing all these videos and whatnot is to be that voice to give you guys a logical, down-to-earth, you know, average Joe's perspective on this shit. This is what we do for fun. If we were all pulling in, you know, the millions, then maybe this would be a different story. You know? But I know most of us, we're, we're not pulling in millions because we're hanging out on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're, we're experiencing all this stuff on YouTube secondhand. We're not all just jumping at this shit. So we want to kind of do it and have a realistic perspective on what you're doing. So this has been my video on the things that make a great action film. Initially it was going to be five minutes, but you know how it goes. Um, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. I feel very strongly about these things. This is what's guided me to collect what I've been collecting. 
my uh, collection of Japanese figures has grown substantially. And, uh, you know, I just feel like this is all stuff that anyone collecting anything should know. So, uh, yeah, as usual, that's it for me. You guys have been great. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And peace outside.